Hey, what's going on everybody? Egan Media here, and today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different from what you would normally see here on the channel. As most of you guys know, I primarily and mainly only just stream here on YouTube. I don't really make videos. In fact, the only video that I've ever made for the channel is a thank you for 200 subscribers video. But today that is going to change because as you can see here, uh, and by the title, we're going to be going through my entire manga collection. As you can see already, just right off the bat, there's a lot to go through. And there's even more down here that you guys can't even see right down there because there's a fourth row. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be starting from the top, making my way down. I'm just going to go throughout each series. I'm going to talk about it, like really just my thoughts, how I got into it and how I found it. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. So if you guys would like to see more videos, maybe like this or just videos in general, go ahead and leave a like down below. It really helps out every single way, shape, or form you can imagine. And it is always greatly appreciated. And if you guys are liking what you're seeing, why don't you go ahead and consider subscribing? It's literally free and easy to do. And maybe if you've already considered to subscribe, why don't you go ahead and click that notification bell so you are always notified for whenever we go live or whenever a video gets posted. With that being said, people, let's get right on into it. Alrighty, and just a little disclaimer, this is going to be very, very casual. So if I slip up on my words, we're just going to keep on going through it. And we're just going to, we're just going to go until we make it all the way to the end here. But as I said, we're going to be going in alphabetical order. I'm going to be talking about the series, if I found the anime first, or if I found the manga first, which one I was introduced to, uh, maybe just a little fun fact if I have one. And uh, yeah, with that being said, we're gonna start right at the beginning as we should, and we're gonna start off with Assassination Classroom. Now, I was introduced to the anime first for Assassination Classroom, and I was watching Assassination Classroom in my eighth grade. And it wasn't until my freshman year when I made a brand new friend, and for Christmas, they gifted me this whole volume, and I thought that was very sick. Maybe one day I'll go and collect the rest of them. I don't know. I know that there's a bit of them, but uh, yeah, and fun fact, every volume cover has, or at least for Assassination Classroom, has this sort of silly looking face on it. Whether it's, whether like the background is like a different color, so if it's like pink or green, or if like there's a, a, a setting drawn to like a field, this face is always somewhere in one of the volumes. And I think that that's super funny. And it's honestly a nice way to like, let people recognize, oh, that's that series. Okay, that's cool. Just by like the, the volume cover. I like it when series do that. Like when they have like a similar kind of like theme slash trope with the covers. And next up we have Astro Boy from the godfather of manga himself, Mr. Osamu Tezuka, as you can see right there. So I was just casually at Barnes and Noble one day and with my cousins and I just saw this on the shelf and I was like, whoa, okay, this like has to be rare, right? So I immediately picked it up. I haven't read it yet. Also, this thing is ginormous and super thick. As I was saying, I haven't read it yet, but I plan to, I definitely plan to because I've only seen the Astro Boy movie that came out like, oh God, that was a, that was a few years ago. The animated Astro Boy movie, I don't even know what studio made it or like who made it. But yeah, that's all I have for like Astro Boy knowledge. I barely remember it. And I don't know how accurate the movie was or how much like, you know, information or story that the movie actually got. So there's no better way to find out than to pick up the original source material. Am I right? Also, it's an omnibus. So I think I'm gonna just take a fat assumption and say this is three volumes in one. It kind of looks bigger for a three volume in one because I have a couple of those up here, but that's just the assumption that I'm gonna have to go for for now. And the next series we got is Black Clover. Now, when there's a bunch of series, or a bunch of series, Jesus, bleh, when there's a bunch of volumes for the same series, I'm just mainly gonna talk about the first one. Maybe I'll pick out like, oh, what's my favorite volume cover? And uh, yeah, so without any further ado, let's get into Black Clover. This was a series I got into in my freshman year in the anime form. So fun fact about Black Clover in general, uh, me and my friend were having a contest to see who could watch more anime at the time. And I was losing and I heard of Black Clover. So I was like, oh sure, I'll go, I'll go check it out. I'll go watch it. And funnily enough, I ended up falling in love with this series. And it is easily one of my favorite, like new gen shonen anime, all that kind of good stuff. There was never a week where I wasn't excited for a new episode, but we're not talking about the anime. 
well, <laughs> apparently not. We're gonna be talking about the manga. And uh, yeah, one thing that I love about the Black Clover manga, and this just goes for a lot of manga, but this one in specific, there are a few other ones. This mangaka's art style, Yuki Tabata, heavily progresses over time. And I will show you that really soon here. So let's see. So as we can see, this really gives off kind of like what we need to see for like the art style, like mainly like the eyes, the coloring and how they do it, the shading and all that stuff. So this is the first volume. And this is the most recent volume I have. I don't think this is the most recent volume out for the English covers or for the English translations. But as you can see, there is a major, major, I'm also trying to get rid of that glare. So I apologize. If, if, if the glare is there, just try to your best to not really mind it. I'm trying my best. Um, but uh, you can really see an art style progression. And that's one thing that I love to see over like a manga's lifespan. It's just how the art style progresses. And uh, yeah, I seriously love this series so much. And if I had to pick a favorite volume cover, it's either gonna be volume four or it's gonna be, oh wait, no, I take that back. I take that back. I know exactly what my favorite, God dang it, man. I'm trying to get this in. My favorite volume cover has to be this one for sure, easily. Volume 22. Also, by the way, spoilers for a good amount of these series if you haven't already seen these, but this is just such a cool cover. At like the whole meaning and who these two are and everything that that means for the series, oh, it's just, it's just done so good. Now, let me struggle to put these back real quick as I talk about the next series that we're gonna be going into. And that series just so happens to be Bleach. Now, I found Bleach as an anime before I found it as a manga, as I'm sure most people in the West did, as it is the, as it is the first one we will be seeing here of the big three. And I have at least one volume from every one of the big three. But uh, no, yeah, we got the first volume here. And this is, earlier in the video, I was talking about, I love it when a mangaka keeps like a certain theme or like a general theme, at least for all the volume covers. I like it when series do that. Like when they have like a similar kind of like theme slash trope with the covers. Bleach has my favorite one for keeping it like pretty consistent, honestly. Uh, because most of the volumes are like pretty much like every volume. It's just a white background with a character there. Sometimes character reappear, but like this is like a classic, classic one. And like, you can't go wrong with the volume one cover for explaining it. And uh, yeah, I think Bleach is honestly heavily slept on. And um, we got, actually, you know what? We're gonna go through those two. We're gonna go through those two. I was gonna save that for last just because, oh boy, see, yeah, see this, is, this is gonna be a difficult mess. I was gonna save this for last just because it's one of the last things down here, but we're gonna go over to it because I have an entire Bleach box set. Now, first off, I am super excited for when the anime comes back with its final season. And everything in here has the, um, the Fullbringer arc to the end of the uh, Thousand Year Blood War arc. And um, yeah, let me just grab this big old boy out here real quick. Oh, that's perfect, he stands. And this thing is tall, heavy, and definitely expensive. So, oh, it's over here. Let me just open this bad boy. And we have a lot of volumes to look through here. It starts at volume 49 of Bleach, and it goes all the way to the last one, AKA 40, 40, Jesus Christ, 74. And I'll pull out a couple of ones just to show you what I mean by like, it keeps like a general, same kind of like style for the volume covers. So like, as you can see, this one's like all white in the back and it's just a character. Um, oh boy, this is gonna be super annoying. Actually here, let's skip after this arc. So yeah, like this one right here, you know, character, all, all white background, character, all white background, character, all white background. He keeps like a general basic kind of thing. And it's honestly super sick. And I love that he keeps it consistent. And then right here we have a little mini poster and then a little art book here that has a couple of things from all of these uh, chapters that you, all the, these chapters, the, the volumes that you see here. And uh, yeah, that is the Bleach third box set. Let me put this back down and then slide her on in there. And uh, yeah, I have two other Bleach volumes here, the first three in one and then the last two in one, um, just because, well, I got these before I got that. So yeah, uh, next up is Burn the Witch. And fun fact, this is done by the same author as Bleach, which was very convenient that they just so happened to fall right next to each other. 
So Burn the Witch is a one shot that the author of Bleach decided to do. And spoiler alert, turns out it takes place in the same world as Bleach. This was just a really cool thing to see because uh, Tate Kubo, the author of Bleach, um, really just got kind of like side, like put put off to the side. So did Bleach near its end. And I feel really bad because I, I genuinely love Bleach. But uh, no, yeah, he came back with this and it was pretty good. It got like a movie slash OVA. And this isn't even the actual cover. This is a little casing for it. The actual cover is inside here. Yeah, so this is the actual volume cover. And I believe this one, yeah, the art wraps around. So like the full image you get when you open it all the way. I don't think I'll be able to do that because like I just said, um, I'm gonna be doing this one-handed and, uh, oh boy, just give me one second to put this back in. Alrighty, and with that, it is back in its little case. And uh, we can move on to the next series right here, which is Chainsaw Man. Now, this and wow, this anime, great start. This manga, this series doesn't even have an anime yet. It got announced and we got a trailer or two for it, but no anime yet. So I've been collecting every volume. I started reading this in my last year of high school. Yeah, in my last year of high school. And I kind of... I, I came in very late to it. I think, well, like the, the series wasn't finished and I think we were approaching the final arc when I started reading. So I just kind of blitzed right on through this. If you guys have not read Chainsaw Man, never heard of Chainsaw Man, please go check out Chainsaw Man. It is so good. I fell in love with the series so easily. And uh, let me pull out the first volume right here just so we can see. Oh, see now this, this is a classic image for Chainsaw Man. Oh, this is so good. I love this cover. And the best part is there are so many amazing covers for all the Chainsaw Man volumes. And I currently have every single one that's out printed in English. And my favorite one, uh, let's see. I think honestly, my favorite one is gonna have to be this one, volume six, just because this takes place in the arc, one of my favorite arcs. And it has one of my favorite characters on the cover that is Rize. And, um, oh my God, I, I, I'm, I'm honestly still not fully emotionally over what happened in that arc. I just, oh, like, like that, Chainsaw Man is a series that'll get you in your heart. Oh boy. All right, next up is Cube Arts. Now, this is a very, um, this is not a popular series. I'm just gonna say that right now. And since there's only two of them, I'm just gonna pull them both out and we're just gonna show them off. So cube art, right? You, you, you look at the title and you think, okay, what the hell is this? Well, to give you my, my Spark Notes version of what this is, imagine Sword Art Online, but in Minecraft and only three volumes, which pisses me off so much because every time I go, they only either have one of these two or just the two of them. They never have the third one. And I know it's out in English. I know it's out. It's just none of the bookstores around me has had them. So the day I get the third and last cube arts is the day that I, I don't know, I'll be happy. I've already went and read the third volume online somewhere, but um, if you guys want just kind of like nothing too impressive, just kind of like a fun read. If you guys like Minecraft, then, uh, well, this is the closest thing I've ever seen to like a Minecraft equivalent in an anime, which is weird enough to say honestly on its own. And if you guys didn't mind Sword Art Online or at least the beginning part, then this should fit right up your alley, honestly. Because, you know, who doesn't like Minecraft and uh, who hasn't seen Sword Art Online? I won't say who doesn't like Sword Art Online because I know Sword Art Online is a heavy, uh, controversial topic. Uh, moving on. Not a controversial topic, just has a lot of uh, hot takes for the series. And uh, next up is Dr. Stone. We're moving on into the D and the only D in this. Um, this is a, in my opinion, a very underrated series. It runs in Shonen Jump along with a bunch of the series that we have literally just kind of breezed right through. And uh, I found this through the anime. And I gotta say, I absolutely love this series. It is so different from like what you, what we've seen in like any other kind of normal series. And I, oh my God, I love it. I really hope to get more volumes in the future because I only have the one. And I'm very much so looking forward to Dr. Stone season three. I cannot wait for that to get fully announced. But um, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Dr. Stone, please go check it out. It is such like a cool concept and just like series. And I actually, 
I think it's ending here pretty soon. So that's, well, the manga is at least, so that's upsetting. Next up is one of my more favorite series. We got Eden's Zero. And this is a series that I have literally been following since day one of the first chapter release. And I've been getting all the volumes almost on the first day that they all drop. Let me grab the first one right here. I got this day one of it being released here in America. And oh my God, I, I it is so crazy because I have never started a series like the, well, I'm, of course I haven't. I have never started a series the day it started and I've followed it ever since. And these are all the volumes that are out for Eden Zero as well, by the way. But um, this is done by the creator of Fairy Tale, right up there, Hiro Mashima. I have a couple of his uh, other series here and you will go through those by the time we get through them. I found this manga because, uh, spoiler alert, my favorite anime of all time is Fairy Tale. I know that's a controversial opinion, but I don't care. It's my favorite for my, re for my own reasons. And uh, the moment I heard that Hiro Mashima was gonna be starting up a brand new series, I was like, sign me the hell up. And you know, from day one, I've been following it. And um, I, okay, I know for a fact that I have a favorite volume cover. I genuinely just kind of have to think about what it is. Honestly, it might be between 11 through 13. These three, oh, I have to, I have to, we're, we're about to figure out. Okay, actually, so right off the bat, it's definitely not 11. Cause, okay, 11 is not bad, but there's better. 12 is a high, high, high contender, honestly, because this looks, that is just so cool. And this was such a good part of the story as well. 13, I just love 13 just because it's so wholesome. They're all at the beach. They're all having fun. Look at everybody. Look at the silly little octopus and all the fishies and the crabs and all that stuff. I love it. I love it. So wholesome. But I think my favorite volume is going to have to go to volume 12 right here. Um, just because, like I said, it was take place in such a cool part of the story and it just looks so cool um also super excited for season two i think it just officially officially got announced that you know like it's happening so that's pretty awesome and now we get to move on to the second shelf and starting off strong with the second shelf we have a uh, fairy tale as I just said before, this is my favorite anime of all time. So fun fact, my first ever volume of Fairy Tale was not volume one, it was volume 48. I, this was actually the first ever manga volume that I ever owned actually, which was interesting because, you know, as we can see here, I like to start, or, oh, no. That was uncalled for. As I was saying, as you guys can see, I like to start from volume one and then work my way up as almost everything we see here is either a volume one. Actually, no, everything here does start with volume one. No, yeah, that's factual. Okay, well, yeah, I don't really like to start with anything other than the first volume. I kind of like to work my way up, but for some reason, uh, little old me at my second ever convention was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick up a fairy tale volume because I wanna start getting into manga now. And, uh, it just so happened to be this one, but honestly, I don't regret it. This has so many sick moments in this arc, which is the Tartarus arc. I've reread this, I reread that one specifically so many times and um, oh my God, I just love it. And easily, easily, no doubt. And this is the only reason why I have this one purchased because I had to go back and buy volume one, right? Just so you know, get the first one easily. My favorite volume of this entire series is volume 30, just because of the colors alone. There is no other volume like Fairy Tale that just, that is just kind of like one big image. And with the colors, oh, the blue and the black just works so well. The moment I saw this in my local, like, you know, like bookstore, I was like, oh my God, I, I need that. Like that, that is just a beautiful one. And I am having a very difficult time getting this in. Come on. There we go. And uh, yeah, I've collected a little bit of Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest, uh, but I haven't picked up anything ever since the third volume. And let's see, do I have a favorite? It might be that one. I don't think it's actually, yeah, it's this one. It's definitely this one. This one's easily my favorite cover. Now for the ones that I own, at least, for the ones that are out, that's a, that's a different story. Moving on, next to Fully Cooley. Now, this was an extremely insane find because first off, if you guys know what Fully Cooley is, Fully Cooley is uh, the greatest fever dream you will ever watch. I found this through the anime 
And same thing with Fairy Tail, I forgot to mention that. Found Fairy Tail through the anime. And I found Fooly Cooly through the anime because there wasn't a manga for Fooly Cooly to be Fooly Cooly to be based off of. Fooly Cooly was an anime project for just six episodes. Well, at least the first season of it does. There were two more, I think, that came out afterwards. But uh, I'm I haven't read this yet. Um, but I definitely look forward to reading it. And as you can see, if you guys have watched Fooly Cooly, this is a very interesting art style choice for the uh for you know to represent it because the anime art style is very much so different from uh this manga art style and on the back here we have a couple of more characters and the they, they, they like it, the first time i picked this up i was like who are they but after looking at it for a little bit longer i was like oh my god that's them okay that's an interesting choice but no uh, yeah um fully cooly greatest fever dream six episodes long and i highly highly recommend it fully cooly is such a good anime next up is Gintama. Now, I literally just got these the other day. And um, so fun fact, uh, I have a friend, they were selling a bunch of their manga because they needed to get rid of some for space. And I was like, okay, I'll take a look, what do you got? And this was one of the first things that they showed me. And I was like, uh, um, yeah, I'm taking this. Because uh, for those of you who don't know, in the West here, good old america land right uh gintama really isn't um shown the love it deserves now i have not watched the anime i have not read the manga i just heard stuff about gintama but i the one thing the one thing that i do know about gintama is that everyone who has read watched however they took in gintama has had absolutely nothing but amazing things to say about it and I genuinely look forward to figuring out about it. But as to why I picked these up immediately, like I said, in the good old West, America land, nobody has decided to either dub the anime or sell an English version of the manga. Now you may be saying you have four of them right here. What are you talking about? Stop the cap, right? But the thing is, is that way back in the days of early Shonen Jump manga getting published, this was one of the series that they first did and then after like i don't know when they stopped doing it but after a while they just entirely stopped localizing the gintama volumes which is honestly really i don't get it because from what i've heard gintama is insanely loved by everybody in japan and obviously as i've heard before through everyone you know everyone who's seen it as absolutely loves loved gintama and this is another series that sort of follows like the same kind of like pattern as like volume covers they all sort of take place in space with having a character surrounding them or surrounding them with a character in the background of it which is really cool and uh yeah i am very much so looking forward to starting this this is probably going to be one of the first ones i start reading whenever i get the time to i have because i have a bunch of these not a bunch but i have a good amount of these that i haven't read speaking of ones that i haven't read yet is this next series called goldfish now i literally know absolutely nothing about this series I was in a bookstore, Barnes & Noble, one day, and I saw this, and I was like, oh, this looks very interesting. And I pick it up, and I look at this, and I'm like, whoa, this is one hell of an art style. And one thing that I'm looking here, one, and then I open the pages, and then this is like one of the first, this is like one of the first pages that you see. This is beautiful art, and I absolutely love this. I'm very interested to see what the hell this series is about, because I genuinely couldn't tell you much other than what's on the back here. Apparently this boy can turn whatever he touches into gold. So that's pretty cool. I'm sure that'd make out for a good series. And next up, we got Haikyuu. And I have seen the first uh, season of Haikyuu. I started the second season, just sort of stopped watching, not because I didn't like it, but just because I kind of fell off. I plan to go back and, you know, go back and just finish Haikyuu, but I picked up the first volume and uh, yeah, honestly, it looks pretty cool. I don't really have much to say about Haikyuu. Next up, we got Hiromashima's Heroes. Now, this is a, just in general, a super, super, super cool and awesome uh, like series slash idea. And I will explain that in just one second. So Hiromashima's Heroes, why is this so cool? Well, for those of you who have been paying attention, I remember this is done by the same person that has made Eden Zero and Fairy Tale. Now you might be thinking, well, what the hell is Heroes? Well, if we take a simple look at the cover right here, 
This is a crossover between all three of his series that have been published. Published. Blah. And that alone in itself is super cool because he has three series. He has Rave Master, his first series, Fairy Tale, his second one, and then Eden Zero is the current one. And this is honestly just super cool to just see all three of these, like all three of these franchises together. And if we turn it to the back here, there's a big cover spread of just sort of like all the characters in their respective areas. So we have the main characters, we have the female characters, and then we have the male characters, except for uh, Julia. I don't know why she's not over there, honestly. It makes sense that she's by Let, but you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have all three of them. We have Rave Master, we got Fairy Tale, we got Eden Zero. And this is the uh, 10 chapters of all of them, you know, of all three of them together, working together just to quell a simple evil that just so happened to show up on this island that they were all on. And fun fact about this, this was for the 60th anniversary of the magazine that uh, Hiromashima has been working in. So that is a uh, Weekly Shonen magazine. And so, yeah, he decided to do, I think actually they reached to him and was like, hey, can you do something cool since you've been here for so long? And he was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And next up is another Hiromashima product. I have a lot of stuff by Hiromashima. And this is called Hiromashima's Playground. Now, just by that title, you, you're probably not gonna get a lot by it, but uh, I'll explain what it is. Pretty much, this is just a bunch of uh, one-shots and little stories that uh, the author of Fairy Tale made, either while making Fairy Tale, before making Fairy Tale, none after Fairy Tale. You can see where a bunch of inspirations for his uh, current series or his previous series have come from. For example, like this guy, this is like, this came from a one shot called Fairy Tale, but spelled with an L E, not T A I L. And uh, this was pretty much the Anatu equivalent. And uh, yeah, this guy right here, that's Magician. He is like the first ever Jalal clone. If you know what Fairy Tale is, you know who Jalal is. He was the first ever Jalal clone because in every single one of Hiromashima series, there is a character that has the Jalal like look, or at least the the eye thing, the thing on his eye. But uh, yeah, this is Hiromashima's Playground. This was a very, very cool and interesting find. I'm super glad that the company that Hiromashima runs in uh, decided to publish this. And next up is the first volume of Hunter Hunter. This was actually a gift from a friend as well. And uh, they gifted me this after I was done watching the anime um, because you know, after you finish a series, you're kind of just obsessed with it. And you're like, oh my God, I, I kind of like, I want merchandise from it now, right? And this was the gift that they sent me. And it's honestly really cool. I've read through this. And one thing that really like kind of popped in my mind because Hunter Hunter is an older series. Yoshihiro Togashi, the author of Hunter Hunter, right? When he was making this, he didn't have like digital technology to help make the manga, right? Like that a shame as I was saying. He didn't really have digital technology to, you know, draw the manga or to make the manga. He had to do this all on paper. And that's something that I really have to give all of like the older mangakas props to because most mangaka nowadays, they have digital stuff to work with and how to make their stuff. But the old guys, the old men, the old farts, they had to do this all pen, paper, paint and develop their art style in every single way. And just mad props to mad props to all the goats, the old goats that made all the amazing old series. Next up, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Now these two look very different right off the bat because these two are in Japanese, and I'm just gonna pull them both out because these, uh, well, actually, they I think they just started uh, making an English copy or English translations of Part Six, which is what this part is right here. Uh, and they're definitely not anywhere close to doing the seventh part, Steel Ball Run. These are like one of my two favorite parts, and uh, I had to pick these up, or pick these up, yeah, right. I had to, I had to order these online to get these, and uh, yeah, these are honestly just so cool having. They're, and as you can see, they are very much, here, let me pull out just like a random volume. This is like a modern English volume, and that's the Japanese one. The Japanese ones are smaller which I guess is a good thing because if you wanted to get a manga series, you could get the Japanese one and it save a lot of room. You wouldn't be able to read it, but you could, you know, save a lot of room. But uh, yeah, these are 
easily like two of the coolest uh, things that I have here in uh, my collection. Next up is the first two volumes of Jujutsu Kaisen. So I had heard of Jujutsu Kaisen before the anime dropped and it became a mega hit. And um, I picked up the first two volumes, like I said, and uh, I read it and I, in the moment while I was reading these, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is gonna be a hit. This is gonna be like a, a big hit with, you know, the anime world. And uh, would you look at it? They absolutely are. And I'm sure that has to do with, you know, the MAPPA adaptation, which by the way, MAPPA, you've done an amazing job making literally all of the manga you've done recently, whether it's gonna be, whether it's Jujutsu Kaisen, Attack on Titan, the final seasons, or Chainsaw Man, which is soon to come, or literally anything else you've taken on, MAPPA, you're doing a great job, so keep it up. But uh, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen, really cool, and I'm very much so looking forward to this movie that's apparently just coming out next month, and then season two, of course, but uh, yeah, that is Jujutsu Kaisen. And next up, we have a... Okay, this is I, this is done... Okay, I don't know what the proper term is, but this is a Korean manga. I think that's a manhwa. I'm not 100% sure. If I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me or I'll probably correct myself, like right here or something. But uh, yeah, this is called King of Hell. Or is it The King of Hell? Nope, it's just called King of Hell. And uh, yeah, this is an older series and it is a very, very interesting one. I went and read through this. The art style is kind of crazy. And I got Bleach vibe. Bleach vibes come from it just because of like, if you guys remember what early Bleach was like, oh, you know, go and stop all the all the hollows, right? This is kind of what it is, but like, in a, it ha it's obviously not Bleach and it has its own take on this kind of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, this was really cool. This was also a gift from a friend. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for this gift. You know who you are. Moving on to the next one. We have Mashal. This is a brand new series in Shonen Jump. Uh, Mashal Muscles, or Magic and Muscles. Um, I heard that this one's popping off right now. Oh. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> As I was saying. Uh, I heard that this one's kind of popping off right now, or at least what's, what's, with what's happening in the manga. Uh, has not gotten an anime yet or an anime announcement, so we just have to wait and see for that. I have not read this yet. I have to read it. But um, this is... Imagine, like, One Punch Man, but, like, the world is magic, and obviously he's One Punch Man. So he has no powers or anything. He's just a super strong guy, a lot of muscles, and, uh, yeah, I've heard that a lot of people like it. Next up is My Hero Academia, Vigilantes. And you guys might be wondering, wait, how come you have Vigilantes and not My Hero Academia? Well, simple answer is because these are worth collecting in my opinion. No hate towards My Hero Academia as a series. I love My Hero, right? Started watching it way early on in season one. But Vigilantes, it doesn't have an anime. And that's how I found this series uh, through the manga, because like I just said, no anime. Honestly, I'm still waiting on an announcement for that, but you know, that will happen when it, when it happens. And uh, yeah, this is honestly just a super cool and like just, just a nice take on the world of My Hero Academia, because one thing that I realized like while reading this is that My Hero Academia is a very like open world. And what I mean by that is, is like, my Hero Academia, you can do a lot of different stuff in My Hero Academia. You, for, for God's sakes, if the author wanted, it could have been a romance story. Because, like, with, because, like, the idea of a superhuman society could work with anything. And obviously, how they decided to do it was really good. Um, you know, just a battle action shonen. Uh, but Vigilantes is a nice take. This guy is the main character, uh, Koichi... Koichi, I don't remember his last name, Hirose, I think it might be, and um, yeah, he's a vigilante, he just kind of does like minor work, but then he gets attraction by some other people, and he gets caught up in some other trouble, and uh, yeah, I genuinely really enjoy this series. If you guys like My Hero Academia, and you want more, then I highly, highly recommend going to check uh, this series out, and let's see, my favorite cover, um, no, not that, let's see. I think my favorite cover might be volume seven because I remember specifically, well, it's definitely my favorite cover art wise, but I remember specifically after finishing this volume, I was like, oh my God, you really decided to end it off at a cliffhanger like that. And I was very excited for the next volume. And next up we have Monster Soul. 
This is another little series by Hiro Mashima. Like I said, same guy that did Eden Zero, Fairy Tale, and Rave Master. This was a little project that he worked on in between, I think it was it was either in between Fairy Tale and Rave Master, or I think he side worked on this with Fairy Tale. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it's a little series, only two volumes long, and um, I'm, I'm still looking forward, or I'm still looking forward, I'm still looking for the second volume. But uh, yeah, just a cool little side story. And uh, yeah, another Hero Mashima series. Next up, we have the first volume of Naruto. And the only thing, okay, never mind. I was about to say the only thing I have in Naruto, but that's a lie. We'll get to that later. Or actually, no, nah, we'll get to it right now. So, Naruto, right? Everybody knows Naruto. Uh, Naruto's a classic. Um, the second of the big three that I have, we're about to get to the third one real quick, as you can see it right there. But um, no, yeah, my cousin got me into Naruto, same cousin that got me into fairy tale. Fun fact, it was my cousin that got me into fairy tale. He also got me into Naruto. And oh my God, if you haven't seen Naruto and you like Shonen, just just go through it at least once. It's so good. I love Naruto. Um, and oh my God. Okay, best openings ever from an anime. And that is how I found Naruto. I found it through the anime, of course, as I kind of explained just a second ago. And the other thing I have of Naruto is right here. It's an official data book. And as you can see, this is from later on in the series as because that's a ship in a design. And the art style has changed a bit. This isn't anything manga. Well, I mean, it is about the manga, but it's all just like stats about the characters and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that is all I have for Naruto. This is gonna be a pain in the ass to put back right now, isn't it? Moving on. Next, we have number six. And this is a, a series that I read this a while ago. I was told that I'd like it, so I picked it up and I did like it, but I do not remember much about this. If I wanted to continue getting it, or wanted to continue, I have to reread it. I remember it was an easy read. It's very thin, but uh, I don't really have much to say and I apologize for that. So if there are any number six fans out there, uh, I greatly apologize. And next up is one piece this behemoth of a series so i started one piece with the manga and this was my first ever um one piece volume and actually i have uh, a one the one piece stampede little card you get because it's it's hard like a card and uh they gave you this when you went to go see the movie when you bought the ticket when you're walking in and it's really cool and i've always just kept it inside of there but uh, yeah, this was the first ever volume uh, of One Piece that I had, and I wanted to go through it. So I got the three in one, and because I wanted to start it, and I did. And I, this, yeah, this was how I started. And then next up, I went and read the next three in one. So this is, goes all the way to about like, at least, I think it ends like right after they meet Gaimon. Or no, do they meet Sanji? I don't remember. I think they meet Sanji in this one. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, that's where that picks up. And then I have a couple of other volumes. Um, by the time I caught up with One Piece, Wano in the manga was just uh, starting. So I have decided that I'm going to collect every single Wano volume there is. Obviously I'm missing some. It starts at 91 and you know, continuing onward. I think like confirmed volumes that we know like the cover of, so far, it goes up to 101, which is so sick. I cannot wait to have the 100th volume of One Piece in my collection. But my favorite volume, I think, I think it's gonna have to be, no, it's not that one. This is gonna be a difficult one because these are so like, always like so detailed. It, okay, it's either, it's either 98 or it's either 91. I, no, I, I think it's 91. And these are only for the volumes that I have, like I said earlier. And my other, my favorite volume from One Piece is probably, I don't even know, I'd have, I'd have to look through all of them. And the last one for shelf two is this little series called Orient. Um, I don't know much about this series. All I know is that it's from the creator of Magi, uh, The Labyrinth of Magic. And I know that a lot of people love, love Magi. And so uh, I haven't seen it yet. I plan to watch it. And uh, actually I think, I think the anime for Orient just started, honestly. I've yet to read this, or at least we've gotten a trailer for Orient. I don't know, but I know that it at least has some form of animation release for it. So uh, yeah, that's Orient. And now 
we can move on to the second, or second, geez, the third shelf. Alrighty, so for this third shelf, I think we're gonna be able to breeze right through this one real easily and real simply. Uh, mainly because the majority of the third shelf is one series and uh, as you can see it's Pokemon and we're gonna start with it. So Pokemon Adventures Volume 1. The start of it all. So for those of you who uh, don't know, I'm a huge fan of Pokemon. We have literally played through Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Legends Arceus here on the channel and if you guys are interested in that there are playlists for that entire series. Uh, yeah, so be sure to go ahead and check that out after you're done watching this video. But um, I love Pokemon, right? My first ever game was Pokemon Y. I know I came in late, but uh, you know what? I, st I still love the series, and I look forward to going through all the rest of the regions uh, when that time comes. And uh, this is just a little poster that came with... Because I, I normally buy these in, like, little box sets that they come in. But, uh, yeah. So, Pokemon Adventures. What the hell is Pokemon Adventures? Come on, really, dude? Pokemon Adventures is, uh, from the words of the creator of Pokemon, Satoshi Tajiri, this is the closest and most realistic adaptation of Pokemon that he has ever seen. So, what that means is that this manga series is the closest adaptation, wait, is the closest to what the creator of Pokemon's imagination was when he was first creating it. And so, like, this kind of, like, follows the rules best, and this is honestly just such a sick series. The anime for Pokemon, it's good in some parts, but it, it 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 could be really a whole lot better. That's what the manga is for. I'm just kidding, that's not what it's for. But um, I really wish that this would get an anime adaptation. This has been going on for years and I love this series so much as you can obviously tell. Um, but as for, actually we'll pull this right back out. As for who this follows, uh, these go through every region that we have been through and mainly through all the games as well because they're separated and divided into like what the names of the games were and i'll show you that later on as we continue so for this one right here this is for red blue slash green and this follows the adventures of red blue and green and then i think it's in volume is it in volume four yes it is in volume four where we go on to yellow and this is yellow, that's actually their name. And by the way, all of the characters' names, the main characters, share the same name as like the title of the game. So like the first three, red, blue, and green, the characters are red, blue, and green. Red is obviously red, blue is blue, and then green is the female. And then this is yellow. Some of these, some of the characters here are original characters, but most of them are the ones that you play as in the game. But uh, yeah, and then this goes through Kanto, all the way through volume seven. This is the last volume of Kanto. And this, this was honestly such a fun read to go through the first time. Next up, we go through Johto. This character is gold. That's the name that they decided for him. And um, come on, work with me here. And let's see, is he on this cover? Yes, he is. There we go. We got silver there. And is she on the third one? Yes, she is. This is Chris, for sure for Crystal. So yeah, this uh, Johto is honestly really really sick because it or you know johto and kanto are combined they're literally like right next to each other so the johto storyline is somewhat tied in with the kanto storyline and also this does not have the typical okay well it does have the typical like team rocket you know evil team yada 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 however it adds in a whole lot of new members of team rocket that weren't in the games they came up with these and it's honestly such an interesting take on some of the characters because all the characters that they add into the evil teams are characters that we've seen before in the games. And it's just so interesting to see like how they would operate in Team Rocket. And that mainly goes for Team Rocket, not really for the rest of these. But this, uh, the Johto Saga goes all the way from volume eight to volume 14. And this is a thick volume actually. This is a very thick volume. As you can see, we have like literally all of the characters here. We have gold, Chris, yellow, red, silver, blue, uh, green, by the way, can I just say, I love Green so much. She is easily like one of my favorite characters from this, from this entire manga series. Next up, we got, uh, let's see, we got Gen 3, AKA Hoenn, AKA the Ruby and Sapphire games and ignore why I have two of the first, two of the first volume of it, volume 15. And uh, as you can see here, like you can assume that's Ruby. 
that sapphire. And a cool thing about this is that they switch like what you would expect these characters to go to because we follow through with both of them, right? Okay, nope, let's not fall. And fun fact, Brendan, or Ruby, God, I just called him by his game name. Ruby does contests and Sapphire does like the gym battles and battling. Well, Ruby battles, but he prefers the contests. He's actually a super great battler and you get to learn why that's the situation as you progress with the manga. It's very, very cool. Very, very cool. I love uh, the Gen 6 iteration of this manga. And then next up, where is it? Okay, yeah, this is the last volume of Ruby and Sapphire. There is an Emerald section. I have read that. I do not have a physical copy of it. And then uh, next up is, oh wait, no, never mind. Well, I mean, I, I still, I don't have the volumes for it, but I was gonna say Emerald comes after these games. I was wrong, I forgot, because as you can see here, I have volumes 20. 21, 22, 24, and 25. You may be saying, what the heck? Obviously, I'm missing volume 23. And volume 23 is the start of the Fire Red and Leaf Green little saga. Consists of three volumes, pretty short, but uh, it's it's all right. It's not that bad. We get to visit or revisit the Kanto main characters, and it's really cool. And lastly, for the Pokemon, uh, we have Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. They decided to bunch this all up into one, which honestly, I'm not mad for. And uh, we, follow th we follow with all three of these characters, obviously Pearl, Diamond, and Platinum. These are all their, all na all their names. This is the only one where it feels kind of weird for their names to be Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. I guess it kind of works for you for your name to be Pearl, I don't know. I just feel like that works the best out of all these, but I, whatever, it's fine. I'm not gonna get picky over the names, but that's what their names are. And I haven't read, actually I read a bit through the first volume, I need to continue because I love this series. And the moment, cause like how I normally read these is that I'll start it, I'll start like, I'll start it, I'll finish it. And then I'll start the new section. So like the new region, and then I'll go onto that. I'll stop for a while, then I'll pick it up and I'll pretty much just binge it all on Monday just because of how good it is. But yeah, once I start or pick up this first volume again, I know damn well that I'm gonna at least binge through half of these. And then I'm gonna probably go through the rest of them in a later date. Moving on out of Pokemon into Rave Master. Now, this is a old series. This is old, yeah, old from like 19, late 1990s, ran through 2003, I believe, or 2005, one of the two. I don't know why I can't get the right, the right year in my mind, but went through the one of those, right? And we have a couple of different one of these, because as you can see, they're all differing in a bunch of like styles for the covers. These three have the red thing, these two don't, and then this one's just huge. This was the first volume of Rave Master that I ever got. Uh, I was reading Rave Master all online, and then it was around Christmas time where I was like, oh, you know what? I'd love to get the last three in one so that I can finish it on a physical copy. And I finished it, I read it, and I cried. Also, we're back at Hiro Mashima. And this is his first ever series that actually got published where it ran through a whole 35 volumes. I highly recommend Rave Master if you liked Fairy Tale and or if you like Eden Zero. But um, yeah, I I think it's gonna be very rare. It's gonna take a long time. But if I ever get the vol all the volumes for Rave Master, I would be a very happy camper. And one thing that I just wanna point out real quick, this is the third As I was saying, this is the third volume for Rave Master. Now, if you remember what the other volumes for Hiro Mashima's other series looked like, this is, um, you can see that this is where he started easily. Just based off of like, you know, the anatomy, the characters, and how like the art style and all that good stuff. I'm gonna pull out a couple of other Hiro Mashima volumes and we're just gonna compare and see how his art style has progressed over time. Alrighty, so right here we have a couple of Hiromashima series and um, we're just going to go ahead and look through the general art progression. So like I said, this is the third volume of Rave Master pretty early on in the series. Then we go on to the last three volumes and this, this cover is specifically is for the last volume of Rave Master. You can automatically see an immediate, immediate progress in art style and just art in general with this one. 
it kind of reminds me of like a kind of like early One Piece art style. But yeah, that's that's beginning of Rave Master, end of Rave Master. Next up, we have the first volume of Fairy Tale. You can see a bit of progress with uh, the characters and the anatomy and some stuff. Uh, Happy looks deranged as all hell. Jesus Christ, it's kind of terrifying. Next up, we have Monster Soul because this came out around the same time as the first volume of Fairy Tale. Next up, and th th this is the real big progress one. Look at this. And this is the last volume of Fairy Tale. His art style and just his art in general has increased to a insane level and degree. It's genuinely insane. And it's honestly one of my favorite things from reading a Hiromashima series is seeing his art style progress. Then we move on to Eden Zero, the first volume of Eden Zero. And you can see some bit of progress, a little bit of different shading styles, a good amount of stuff. And this is the most recent volume of Eden Zero. As you can see from out, from throughout this man's entire career of making manga, he has drastically improved from this being the third ever volume that he ever made and published to this being one of the most recent ones. And props to you, my guy. Keep making your great manga. I will definitely continue to read all of them. And uh, yeah, that's just a little tidbit that I wanted to just bring up and talk about. Whew. All right, with that being done, we can move on to the next series, which is um, Ro Ro Rosario Vampire. Now, um, if you know what this series is, you know what this is because of the anime. And I don't want you to lie because there are not a lot of people who have given this series a second thought after watching the anime. That means that they would not go ahead and read this, the manga if they were interested in the anime because let me just say this right now. I watched, this was one of the first few anime that I ever watched. I watched this in the sixth grade. And let me just say, that is not the appropriate grade to be watching an anime like this because they went ahead and turned this series into the most fan service, sexy, ooh woo kind of thing you can imagine, deriving entirely away from the original source material and just going ahead and making whatever the hell they wanted. Now, as you can see here, this is the first ever volume and it says, or, you know, nothing right here, but if we look over at this one, it says season two. The manga was separated in seasons just as an anime would be. And the entire actual anime first season of this uh, series um, did not even cover everything in the first season of the manga. Which was um, very interesting. And literally, the I think that they mainly only captured like one key arc from the entirety of the manga's first season. And then they just went on to season two and made it just full of filler. It was just full of filler. There was a good amount of filler in season one, but they at least had one arc from the, from the manga. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to watch the manga, watch the anime, if you really want to, I don't recommend it if you want to get into the series. Um, I did it just because I had nothing else. And I was like, oh, okay, this looks cool and interesting. And uh, this is a, this is a, like a battle action romance series. So uh, kind of a harem. Well, actually, yeah, it is a harem, but it's, it's good. When you hear harem, you're like, oh great. So this is just trash. No, this is good. I promise. And next up is the second volume. These are, you know, two of the girls that are, okay, my, oh my God, Christ almighty. These are two of the girls that follow the main character. Mocha and uh, Kurumu. And I just want to point out something. This is the first volume, right? Of this series. This is the last volume. <laughs> this is an insane progression in art and art style. Like, I, if you told me, if you had hid these like titles and you just showed me these. If you asked me, hey, do you think this was made by the same guy? I would have said probably no. And that these characters just look somewhat alike. Same hair color, same eye color. I, I wouldn't believe you. Because this is genuine. This is insane. Like, because you look at this. And the same goes for like Rave Master or Fairy Tale. You look at this and you get a general idea of where the art style is going to go. Right? Eh, wrong. Not with this. This is the final volume in Oh my God, this is, this, 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 is a, this is just such a good series. If you want a nice, 
good battle romance, please go read Rosario Vampire. Do not watch the anime, unless if you like trash anime in comparison to the manga, then go ahead and do it. But um, if you just want to, just just go, please go read Rosario Vampire, I beg of you. Next up is Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life, or aka Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This is not a manga, this is more of like a webcomic, done by Brian Lee O'Malley the Goat. I got into this through the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and I definitely want to continue to pick up the rest of them. There are only like six of them, I think. And uh, yeah, this is really cool. This is based off of, like I just said, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the movie. And uh, yeah, so that, uh, that, that was a fun little read. Next up is Tokyo ESP, and this is a very obscure and different series. Um, this isn't really mainstream at all. Like, it's not, like, you know how there are some mainstream anime, like, you know, Dragon Ball, Fairy Tale, One Piece, My Hero, and then there are, like, some lesser mainstream anime, like, like, uh, what do we got here? What do we got? Like, Assassination Classroom. Like, that's not the most popular thing, but obviously it has a fan base, like, Dr. Stone. Yeah, this is, like, underneath those in popularity. This is a very not-so-popular series at all. Um... But the only reason why I picked this up is because I watched the anime. And the only reason I watched the anime was because one of my... God. Really, dude? Come on, I thought we were done with this. <laughs> As I was saying, the only reason why I went and I picked up these volumes is because I watched the anime. And the only reason why I watched the anime is because of... Um, if you guys grew up with Minecraft, you may know of this little YouTuber called uh, Scott is Minecraft. Yeah, he voice acted the male main character in this series. And so at that time I was in anime and I was still watching his stuff. So I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. I got to watch it. And uh, yeah, the anime ended, didn't get a second season. And uh, I think this is all I'm going to be reading for Tokyo ESP. It, um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's just not my cup of tea. Now this next one, and I have some explaining to do because... Okay, Two Lava Room. If you know what Two Lava Room is, you know what Two Lava Room is. If you don't, um, this is... Okay, I'll explain what it is, and then I'll explain why I even own this thing. So, Two Lava Room is a etchy romance harem series, and this one is bad. Th 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 this is a bad one. This is a bad one. Um, and the only reason why I picked this up is because... Here's a little fun fact. Throughout everything... Of all of them being through Shonen Jump, which are a lot. A lot of the first shelf is Shonen Jump. You have Assassination Classroom, Black Clover, Bleach, Chainsaw Man, Dr. Stone, My Hero, One Piece. A lot of the bigger popular ones, they all come from Shonen Jump. And a little fact about Shonen Jump is that it is very, very, very difficult to stay published in Shonen Jump. To keep to keep being serialized in Shonen Jump magazine. Because if your, if your series is not doing them numbers, then you get the ax and you're out of there. There are so many series, like recently I've seen, that got axed super early and prematurely by Shonen Jump. Some even only get 13 chapters then and then just get cut. Example of this is uh, the creator of Naruto, Masashi Kishimoto's second series, Samurai 8. That shit got axed. If they gave it a chance. They gave it a chance. They let it run on longer, in my opinion, than it should have been. They gave it a chance, but they had to cancel it just because it wasn't doing numbers. Good enough numbers, and uh, yeah. This was in Shonen Jump, and that, first off, surprised me because this series was able to finish in Shonen Jump. So my curiosity was piqued when I was like, okay, how did a stupid little etchy harem series like this, that's not good, unlike something else right over here, manage to stay through? I picked up the first volume, started reading through it, and I quickly learned uh, a little fact about this. And uh, I decided to just keep this uh, right there. And I will not be reading to Love Room because I am a responsible adult and I will not be reading that. Anyways, next up on um, the last thing on the third shelf is the... God. It's not even funny. I don't even want to do the bit anymore. It's not even funny. It's not even funny at this point. How rude. Last but not least on the third shelf is Your Name, both volumes one and two. If you don't know what Your Name is, this is, or this was for a time, one of the, this was, no, the 
best-selling anime movie. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I caught you. I caught you that time. This was the best-selling anime movie of all time. It triumphed over Spirited Away, and for good reasons. This is such, such, such a good movie. I watched this in theaters when it came out, and oh my god. It was so beautiful, done by uh, Makoto Shinkai. And he, he has plenty of other movies. I need to watch them, honestly. They're so good. These are just the manga forms. Obviously, it's a movie, so it didn't come from a manga to begin with. These were drawn by an artist. Uh, let's see, who, who drew this? Ranmaru Kotone drew the art. And there's only one more volume of Your Name that I need to pick up. It's the third one, and then that's it. All for the Your Name manga. And uh, yeah, with that being said, that completes the third shelf and we will be moving on to the last and final shelf right here. And we don't got a lot to go through. So let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm gonna be saying this right now. Um, some of these are actual books. Most of them is, most of them are manga and uh, yeah. And we're not gonna be going through that because I already went through it. Now let's get started right on into it. The first one being Akira Toriyama's Manga Theater. Now, if you don't know who Akira Toriyama is, you clearly haven't done your homework on legit anime in general, or at least shonen anime, because this man is like the father of all current and past battle shonen action series. This is the same man that created Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and th th this guy's just an absolute legend. If we didn't have Dragon Ball, we really wouldn't have a lot of these battle action series that have been inspired by it, like Rave Master, One Piece, My Hero, Fairy Tale, Black Clover, like pretty much every, every battle shonen series that came after Dragon Ball had some way of inspiration from Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball. Even Bleach, like Naruto, like there are so many series that were inspired by Dragon Ball. But this is sort of like Hiro Mashima's Playground, if you remember that, on the second shelf. This is just kind of like a bunch of little one shots that the author did. I think this is super, super cool and a great idea because a lot of more people know of Akira Toriyama and, you know, like I said, the author of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. So this. This is really cool, and I look forward to going through and reading this when I get the time. Next up is B Stars. Do not. This is this, this is the prime example of do not judge a book by its cover because you're gonna look at this, and you're gonna immediately be like, "Oh no, you're one of those kind of people, aren't you?" And no, I am not. This is an amazing series. This. The anime is so good. The anime is so good. The openings are so good. If you if you are open to literally watching any kind of anime, please, please, for the love of God, go watch Beastars. Please go watch Beastars. And I'm going to go real quickly grab another volume that I do not have on this shelf at all. I have it somewhere else because it is a very special series and uh, it deserved its own place. So I'm gonna go grab that real quick. Don't go anywhere. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have grabbed that series and that series is the one and only Berserk. And I got the deluxe edition and this is easily the biggest like thing of manga that I own. For example, I'm gonna pull out this thing of Dragon Ball. It is a lot bigger and it kind of triumphs over Dragon Ball which is very appropriate because, you know, considering, you know, Berserk and, you know, the legacy that it left behind. So fun fact about Berserk, or why I even have this. I've known about Berserk for a very long time and I've always wanted to get into it. Recently, the author of Berserk last year um, died and he prematurely, like, and what I mean by that is like he died way before he should have naturally died. Um, something went wrong in his body and it killed him, sadly. And he was never able to finish Berserk. And for those of you who don't know what Berserk is, Berserk is an absolutely legendary, amazing, and so such a genuinely like inspiring like manga just to see be made. There was there's nothing, there's gonna be nothing like Berserk that's ever gonna come out. And um, it's never gonna finish. 
And the, the day after we got the news that he died, I went to my nearest bookstore and uh, I picked up this uh, big deluxe edition volume of Berserk to pay my respects. And one day, I promise you, Mr. Or Kentaro Miura Sensei, I will go through and I'll read it every inch of this masterpiece that you made. With that being said, moving on. That also, that is super, super heavy. Next up, we have the classics. We have Viz Biggs version of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. So fun fact about these series in general, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z, not Z. Um, so many people know these series as their own thing, right? Everybody knows Dragon Ball from the Dragon Ball anime and everybody knows Dragon Ball Z because it's Dragon Ball Z. Well, fun fact, they separate Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z as two different series, they're not. When Dragon Ball was being published in Weekly Shonen Jump, when Dragon Ball's story arc finished, it went just right on into Dragon Ball Z. No break or anything, it just continued as if it was a regular old thing. So they count Dragon Ball they count Dragon Ball Z as Dragon Ball, but in the West, it's these two are known as two entirely separate series, and uh, it, it's it's complicated. Uh, moving on, Fire Punch. This is a very interesting series. I have yet to go through it, and uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I just gotta go through Fire Punch. Honestly, I just gotta sit down and just go through it, and uh, and that's not the only volume that exists of Fire Punch. There are more Fire Punch volumes. But that's just the only one that I have, and I am having one hell of a hard time getting that in. All right, next up. This is pretty funny. <laughs> so, Fleeing Time Out. <laughs> this is a book. And you may be wondering, is it like, okay, is Fleeing Time Out like from like Japan? Uh, no. This was, <laughs> this was my teacher's book from high school. This was my religion teacher's book, Fleeing Time Out uh, by Stephen Reap. It's a book he made. My religion teacher made a book and this is definitely it. All me and like my friend group, my main friend group, we all are from high school, I should clarify. We all bought a copy of Fleeing Time At. And um, cause how couldn't we, right? And this is pretty funny. And the teacher, by the way, uh, Mr. Reeve, if you're ever, if you come across this for some reason and you made it to this point in the video specifically, um, you are such an awesome teacher. You're such a cool dude. And uh, I, I got through a lot of this. I have yet to finish it. I plan to in the future and uh, keep up the good work, my guy, keep up the good work. All right, next up is Hell's Paradise. And this is a very interesting series. Uh, I have no idea, honestly, what this is. All I know is that it's considered in the trio of like darker shonen titles that came out more recently, that being Hell's Paradise, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Chainsaw Man, because these three are more dark than you know, your basic and current shonen series. Uh, although this is getting an at this is getting an anime adaptation by Mappa. I'm excited to watch that. Hopefully I'll be able to read through this before that drops. And just so I can be a little ahead of the curve whenever the hell that happens. And uh, yeah, that's Hell's Paradise. Next up, we got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure part four specifically, um, hardcover. Uh, the other two JoJo's volumes are up there. These are one of the ones that they, they're currently going through volume, or volume five, part five and uh, publishing all of them in English through all the hardcovers. I gotta eventually one day just get all the JoJo's volumes because I am, I'm a huge JoJo's fan, fun fact, and I am entirely caught up with the series as a whole. So that means the anime and the manga, and I cannot wait for more episodes of part six. Let's go, baby. Next up is a book. And now I have read all the way through this. This is very rare because I normally never ever read through books, but this one is worth it because it is manga in theory and practice, The Craft of Creating Manga by Hirohiko Araki. And this is made by the same person that made JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So this is like a pretty gnarly guide for Jo for like, you know, how to make manga. Cause there's not a lot of like, I guess, tips or like tricks or like, a book even on how to make manga, except till this bad baby came out. And uh, I read this all the way through and I was very enlightened on how Mr. Hirohiko Araki makes his manga and how he thinks people should make manga, or at least his tips for it. Next up is, oh my God, these are just gonna lean over. I'm not even gonna try. This is a My Hero Academia uh, 
pretty much data book. It's called My Hero Academia Ultra Analysis. And this is kind of like the same thing as the Naruto one over here, but except, you know, for My Hero Academia. I got back home because I was hanging out with my cousin. He gave me this as a gift. I think it was for Christmas. Yeah, it was for Christmas. Uh, when I got home, I kind of like went through this and kind of scoured through it all and just learned like all the fun facts through, you know, My Hero Academia are all the stuff that is not, would not be generally known by the basic uh, fans. So uh, yeah, that is super cool. Next up is Rent a Girlfriend. This is, okay, so I found this series from the anime first. I was recommended this. And uh, just saying this now, I am not a very big romance anime person. The, the anime has gotta be very interesting in order to keep my attention or to keep me even watching. Or I just gotta really like the characters. And for, I don't know what it is about Rent a Girlfriend, but I honestly, I really enjoy it. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this anime and I am very excited for season two coming out later on this year. Um, I picked up the first volume because you know, I always like to support the authors uh, in every way, shape or form I can. And uh, yeah, so that's the first volume of Rent a Girlfriend. Now this next series, um, I'm, I think this is another Korean one. I don't know. And if it's not, I greatly apologize for me being not, uh, for not being so educated on this, but this is solo leveling. I've heard a lot about it and uh, I've just heard so many like insane things. Like everybody loves it. It's crazy. It's good. And uh, a lot of hype surrounding it. So I decided to pick it up. I look forward to reading this one day and uh, yeah, that is um, solo leveling. Next up we have Tokyo Ghoul's first two volumes. For those of you who don't know what Tokyo Ghoul is, how do you not know what Tokyo Ghoul is? Second off, um, I haven't watched the anime for Tokyo Ghoul. I've only read through this first volume and I plan to read through the second one sometime. If I'm ever gonna get into Tokyo Ghoul, it's gonna be through the manga because I've heard that the anime is didn't adapt it as well as it could have and just some other issues that people have with it. But uh, I've heard that the manga is an absolute masterpiece. I'm gonna go ahead and agree with them. So uh, yeah, that is Tokyo Ghoul. And we have here Tales of Berseria. And um, so the only reason why I picked this up is because my favorite anime opening of all time is an opening from Naruto Shippuden. That is opening six, AKA sign of Naruto Shippuden. And the opening was done by a band called Flow. I absolutely love them they've done so many other openings they've done more uh, they've done other openings for naruto they did the second one the classic they did they did fighting dreamers um they've done stuff for full metal alchemist they've done stuff for a race they did the main opening for um code Geass. they did a lot and they're amazing and this tales of our series is actually a video game and i was at a convention and um, I was fortunate enough to see Flo live. And oh my God, that was, that. first off, that was my first ever concert. Second off, that was such a cool experience for that being my first ever concert. And the first ever song they played on that concert was a song that plays for the opening cinematic cutscene for Tales of Berseria. So I picked it up and I quickly put it back down because it did not interest me. Moving on. Hello, this is future Egan here. I have been editing this video ever since I finished gathering all the footage for it and it is currently 10 to 13 p.m. right now. And I got to the point in the video where this comes up. Now, I was watching it and I was editing it and I did not like how I explained what this was and like what it, why it's even there. So I'm gonna reiterate the explanation right here. So in high school, we had this teacher, not gonna say what her name was, but she had this book. It's called The Thought of the Day Book and every day before class started, she would make one of the students get up, stand in front of the class and read a random page from this book. Now, it, it just has like a bunch of just like random inspirational things in it. And that's what it, that's what it is. And she had a couple of different classes. And, but no matter what class, you always had to read this. My friends had her in their freshman year in their speech class. I didn't take my speech class all the way until my uh, senior year, I don't know why. It's the second to last day of high school, right? My friend comes into this class that we both had together and he's like, dude, you're not gonna believe what I have in my backpack. He pulls out this bad boy and we're losing it. And he's like, I just grabbed it when she wasn't looking. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. That's a perfect way to end this saga with this teacher that terrorized so many students with this. The next day comes around, he comes into the classroom that we both had together and he tells me, you're not going to believe this. I just had her class 
and there was another one, this one. So I knew what I had to do because after the class that me and him were in, I had her. So she operated in two uh, rooms. There was the library and then there was a regular classroom that was right next to it. So I go downstairs to the class, doors not open, all the students are waiting outside. So we head into the library because we're like, oh, maybe we're in here today. Turns out we weren't and she comes and clarifies that and everybody starts going back over to the regular classroom. However, I stick around, I look for this book, I find it on her desk, open my backpack, nab it, put it in there, and I walk away scot-free. And this is now in my room and not in her possession. And me and my friends joke around that we have to one day burn this book to free all of the trapped souls that had to stand up in front of the class and read a page out of this book. So yeah, that's the explanation on this and uh, have fun like, uh, editing the rest of the video again. Uh, next up, we have, this is actually a really, really cool thing. This is a magazine of Weekly Shonen Jump. Now, if you don't know what Weekly Shonen Jump is, Weekly Shonen Jump is where a lot of the manga that I just talked about here got uh, serialized slash published. Like, for example, Naruto, My Hero Academia, uh, JoJo's, Dragon Ball. Um, let's see, what else we got here? What else we got? One Piece. Um, Hunter Hunter, Haikyuu, Gintama, Black Clover, Assassination Classroom, Bleach, Chainsaw Man, Dr. Stone, and a bunch of other more series that I just don't own. This is just so cool to have. This is just so cool to have. And the cover is Mashal, which is pretty sick, not gonna lie. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Next up is a, next up, these are, these are the last two things here in the video, and that's gonna be it, is two whole art books and these are definitely gonna fall the moment i pull these out yeah, okay you know we're just gonna ignore it these are art books that i got this is one of bleach and the other one is one of pokemon adventures but first bleach so me and my cousin we're both in a manga right and so we go around to a bunch of different like bookstores comic book stores and see if they have manga and we went inside this one and fun fact that is where i found all of these volumes are Brave Master inside this bookstore, and they just so happen to have a Bleach art book. And I was like, oh my god, what? That's so cool. I've always wanted an art book of a mangaka, or from like a manga that I ser a, ma a manga that I series, a manga that I've read, or an anime that I've watched. And this was the first one, and this is just so freaking sick. There's so many. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. And then this one, Pokemon Adventures art book, I went and ordered online. Uh, this was this was this was a Christmas gift to myself, and uh, this goes through I think literally every well obviously everything that was made at the time. So the front cover it has literally like every single protagonist going up to Gen Six, and then on the back side it's all of the main villains. So you know we got Giovanni, Price, Lance, Team Aqua, Team Magma, Maxi and Archie, the Cyrus, Getsis, um, Lysander, and then. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, Maxi and Archie. And uh, yeah, this was just a really cool thing. And uh, I, I plan to get more art books in the future. And with that being said, that is where we are going to wrap up this video. This was definitely longer than I expected it to be, but I'm gonna be sure to, you know, cut it all down, make sure that everything fits in all nice and smoothly. And uh, yeah, I'm sure future reason, I'm sure future Egan is gonna have a whole field day editing this, isn't that right, Egan? Yeah, that's what I that's what I expected. But anyways, uh, if you guys um, enjoyed what you saw, if you're interested in more, please be sure to go ahead and leave a like down below. It helps out every single way, shape, or form we can imagine, and it's always greatly appreciated. If you like this, what you saw just a little bit more, why don't you go ahead and consider subscribing? It's literally free and easy to do. While you're at it, click that notification bell so you're always notified for whenever we go live. And while you're at it, go ahead and comment what your favorite part of the video was. Go ahead and comment any one of these things. What your favorite part of the video was, what's your rarest collection in your manga collection, what's your favorite manga, what was your favorite manga that I owned in my collection. And uh, yeah, be sure to go ahead and comment those down. And uh, I look forward to seeing some of your replies. And sometimes YouTube's gonna be YouTube. And it's not going to give you the notification that you guys deserve, right? Whether it be for streams, videos, whatever it may be, it's not going to give you the notification sometimes. So how do we fix this? Simple solution. All you got to do 
is go to the description of the stream where there will be a link to the Egan Media Discord. Once you join it, you will always be notified for whenever we go live and you'll just be kept up in the loop. And with every notification, you will always get a link to either stream or video, whatever it is that happens, you'll always get a link to it so that you can always be the first one to see it. With that being said, people, my name is Egan Media and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.